So today, um, one of you that uh, were not here last week or that may not have watched last week, um, I um, started something that I'm calling a series, but I think it will go probably up to part three. <laughs> we are just having a joke earlier on before the service that there was one time, I think some of you might remember, I preached on the, is the Holy Spirit? So, yeah. Yeah, 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 and the series went up to... Eight. Eight. Yeah. So, so the issue is we are using the Roman numerals <laughs> to do the city. So we realize as we are going, it was probably more complicated. You know the L X, we know I I and things like that. So, uh, but I think uh, next week uh, we, we will we will complete. We were going to have um, the young people that come for the fellowship if Pastor Mike do the service, but they are not uh, ready yet. So I uh, will have the normal city family church service and I uh, give them an opportunity actually to finish the part three because I do have a part three to this. So last week I uh, introduced this scripture in, uh, not what? Okay. Yeah, maybe just that scripture there, which is, uh, I like this scripture, Second Timothy chapter 3, it says, all scripture is God breath and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So we're going to have to believe scripture, amen, and help us. Sometimes we are looking for answers in scripture, and we don't seem to see them, but they are there, amen, because all scripture is breathed by God, is empowered by God, is anointed by God, and it has answers for us. So when the Bible tells us that there are strongholds and we have powerful weapons to deal with them, we better believe because the Bible says so. Amen? Amen. Praise God. That's the reason why I kept that scripture there. But the verse that we are looking at, that I started looking at, is in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Okay? And, uh, you know, we will we, we, we look at um, um, up to verse 4. By the humility and gentleness of Christ, I appeal to you, I, Paul, who am um, timid when face to face with you, but bold toward you when away. I beg you that when I come, I may not have to be as bold as I expect to be toward you, toward some people who think that we live by the standards of this world. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strong hearts. Amen. Praise God. Like you can see in Paul's writing, he is actually right, he's very bold. Okay? These are strong words he had to write to the church at Corinth because there were problems at the church at Corinth. And last week I gave a background to Paul saying the first thing that he has said in the first two verses, and even literally begging these people, is because there was some confusion, not confusion. There was, there, were, there, were, there were strongholds still existing, particularly at the church of Corinth, where people were not totally renewed in their mind, mm -hmm. and they thought certain things can still be dealt with the way they were dealing with them. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when Paul is now introducing new ways of dealing with these problems, they got a bit confused, and they are thinking, this doesn't work. This is not what we think should be done. You are complicating the gospel. We don't even understand you. Are you even an apostle? Who are you? And why are you writing to us like this? Mm -hmm. so, so they doubted his ministry quite a lot. So he had to explain some of these things. And even he begged them to stick with him to understand where he is going. Okay? So this is that. Now, now so we talked about, so that's the background to it. But last week I talked about verse 3. Though we live in the world, and we talked about the fact that we are in the world, amen? Mm. I mean, in case you are, you are doubting, you can just try to pinch yourself. And uh, just make sure that you are alive, and you are in this world, you are in this room, amen? Okay, and we're going to come out of this room, go downstairs, get in your car, go home, you are in this world, amen? Praise God, hallelujah. We're not somewhere hidden out in the monastery or something like that, we are in this world. We are among people, we are among the new life, amen? amen. Praise God. Real people. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. I'm not expecting that this lady is fake. She's real. <laughs> Amen. I will expect that one day she will lose it. She will be angry. She will be upset with me. Uh, she is real. Mm. And one day she will love me and she will just cuddle me and say, it's all right. She is real. Amen? 
praise God. These are the people that we have in this family church. You are real people. I love you people. Amen. And I think that's important. We are in the real world. So, but Paul says, though we live in the world, but that also means that we are affected by everything else that everybody is affected by. Yeah. The things that we heard in the, in the testimony, the things that we felt in the exhortation as well. But this Paul says, though we live in this world, we, we means us believers, and Paul is saying myself and yourself included, you guys at Corinth. Mm -hmm. We are now believers. We believers do not wage war as the world does. Mm -hmm. We used to do that, but we don't do that anymore. So there must be an, a new alternative of dealing with the same problems. Paul is not saying you now have a new set of problems, no. Or you now have a new set of issues. No, he's saying you will be affected by the same problems. In just says what you see everything. Being a Christian does not make you live in a bubble. But he says the way you now deal with these things, in fact, he uses the word fight. Okay? That fight in Greek means fight, means to engage with something. It does not mean backing off, it really means engage. That's what that word fight means. So, so if you're drawing and try to live on an island where there is nothing but surrounded by water, is not what Paul means. Paul means you must be in the marketplace, face these things, but we must fight them differently. That's what is mentioned. So now they are interested to want to know how we are going to deal with the same neighbor. Okay, yesterday I wasn't a Christian, so I'm a Christian, but the neighbor is still the same neighbor. From hell, as the people say. <laughs> okay? So how am I going to deal with them? So Paul says, you're not going to deal with that neighbor anymore the way you used to before. Okay? When the boy is thrown over the, you know, the garden, fence into your garden, and you throw it back with some words as well, and he says, no, 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 no. You're not going to deal with that anymore. If you want a peaceful neighborhood, there's a different way to do it. Not to buy a, a mega a speaker and say, Oh, listen, neighbors, I don't want these things on my street anymore. <laughs> or if you hear a car park on the street, you open your, you know, your curtains and say, Who is parking in front of my house? Even though you don't have a designated parking lot. No. Paul says it's different now. So people are thinking, Wow, I have changed. But the world around me has not changed. So Paul is introducing a new way for me to do these things. That's the point Paul is trying to tell them. Okay? So those people who insulted you, don't insult them back. Okay? And they're having a problem because these Christians, they still have people who don't like them amongst them. It's the war is waging. So he says, now we have new weapons that we fight with. Verse 4 says, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. And last week we talked about some of these weapons of the world. Okay, things like, you know, some of them are not all bad. You know, in fact, a lot of them are very good. Okay, trying to educate somebody, for example. Trying to put the, 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 the offenders into a reformatory prison. Then that's a good thing because we don't just want, you know, criminal offenders on the street or over the place. We've got to, to, to arrest them somehow and put them away. <laughs> okay? Okay, we've got to do that. Okay? But then we realize, we realize that, you know, no matter how long you put them there, maybe for 10 years they come out. What have we seen on the news? They do offend. Okay? So whilst we are still doing all these things, Paul says, we do not fight like the world fights. That's how the world fights. On the contrary, then, Paul, you must provide an alternative. On the contrary, okay, they have the weapons we have now, they have divine power. And look at what he says. To demolish means to destroy. Man, wow. <laughs> That's what we're looking for. The world is looking for solutions that will just destroy evil. Mm -hmm. yeah? If you have a magic wand and say, Coventry, you are now uh, a number, number 10 on the list of the most uh, you know, uh, criminalized cities, everybody's worried, but if I come with a magic wand and say, Coventry, all the crime is demolished. I'll be a superstar. I might probably even run for prime minister. You know, the country is looking for a leader. I might as well put myself up for that. If I can do that. That's why they are, 
that's why you know they, you know we have all these TV interviews and people asking questions. Leaders, they are looking them into their face. You are promising all this. Mm. Are you sure you're gonna clean up my street? Mm. The world. And the thing is, this is what Paul is saying. These all these things, all these seminars we see, all these question and answer things that we see on the BBC. This is have been going on for centuries from the Roman Empire. We are still asking the readers and the politicians the same questions. Yeah. What does that tell us? The problem is the methods that we are using to solve these problems are not working. That's all Paul is trying to say. Except now Paul has become a bit radical here to say, well, the weapons we have, they can demolish. Wow. That's radicalism. If you come here and promise something that we just solve problems like that, if you don't do it, you are simply being a radical, mm. a fundamentalist, basically. But that's what Paul is saying. Us. He's not missing words here. He says, listen, I don't care how long these problems have been there. For centuries and centuries and centuries, the truth is we do have weapons that can demolish strong ones. So today I want to talk about, about the word strongholds. Because we need to understand that, okay? And uh, last week I, I mentioned a few things about, you know, some, some weapons from Ephesians chapter, chapter 6. And we talked about, you can remember, love, truth, love, righteousness, faith, and prayer. Next week I'll, I'll, I'll come back to those again and give some examples from the word of God. How your love, the love of Christ can bring sanity to your, to your street. Amen? Amen? You don't have to come out with a revolver and say, okay, <laughs> from now on, on this street, after 10 p.m., if I do ever hear anybody play music at a very high volume, you know what will happen to you. <laughs> it's not going to wait for too long. <laughs> they were just waiting for you to go on holiday. <laughs> well, he's not here. <laughs> and they will play their music. Yeah? Mm. But there is a way. That is unseen. That's what Paul is trying to introduce us. So today I want to talk about, about the, the, the strongholds. Amen? Amen? So what Paul is trying to say basically is that, you know, all these programs that we see, educational programs, demonstrations, boycotts, strikes, pressure groups, and whatever, registration, reformations, they are not bad. But the question we can ask ourselves is, how have they fared? And I think the answer is pretty badly. Because if they work, we would not be doing the same thing again. We would not be educating people again. We will not be putting people changing our education systems. Okay? Yeah? Mm. All right. That's what I said last week. Man is just, we are naturally flawed, and that's why we need the Savior. Amen? Mm. Praise God. Mm. I'm sure my daughter is a very, very, very good mother. And she never teaches her son, you know, how not to give. She's never done that before. Okay? But last night we were in a living room and we were we were sharing you know crisps together. Humphrey was there on the crisps and and you know and he has his own uh, type of crisps, okay. And mom was trying to say to him, "Oh come on, Ezra, go share with your granddad, share with Anthony." And he would go into the pocket, take that one out. So come on, go share. He would come halfway and then. <laughs> <laughs> it goes into his mouth. We tried it for a long 10 minutes. <laughs> it never quite worked. Okay? Who was starting not to share that age? Nobody. You know? But life, human beings, we are like that. And that's when, when you go back to the origins, you see when Khan says, and on that day, on that day, all these foreign attributes of humanity entered us. Okay? And that's why Jesus came. To redeem us. We're just naturally flawed. We may look okay, nice suits, well educated on the outside, but I tell you, we are. You know, just like we had the, uh, uh, the exhortation, I'm sure, you know, apart from her husband and everybody, you know, people close to her, nobody could even tell that was this thing raging inside her. She was just looking okay, you know, putting on her clothes okay, going to work, doing everything, and yet there's that rage. Of anger and resentment against this whole thing. This is how human beings are. These are the strongholds Paul is talking about. 
We've got to get to the deep root of things to deal with, with man. So, these programs, they are good. We've got to send people to school, educate them, teach them how to demonstrate properly, but still, they don't just work. So, Paul brings us to this point and says, we fight with different weapons, and those weapons will destroy the strongholds. So, let's just look at strongholds. I can see from this word strongholds, in English, it's, it's, it's actually one word, strongholds, but it's made up of two words, strong and hold, which both talk about power and strength. Strong means strength. To hold means holding that power, that strength. So it's a very strong word, even just in contemporary English. Strongholds, they hold things down. So strongholds are things that uh, you know, they are like patterns of behavior that are entrenched in the behavior of people, a community, an individual, or a nation, or even globally. They are there and they stop people from changing, from transforming. You know, you begin to see them with time sometimes in your own life or in the family. And the, the, in, in, in the deliverance ministry, you know, the one thing you look at in, in identifying strongholds are patterns. You know, that's why sometimes you ask, how long has this been for? And, and things like that. Maybe you even see, you know, people that are close to you also experiencing those kind of things. You know, that's how we tend to, to identify these, uh, these patterns. They are called strongholds. These are, strongholds is not, it's not a building. It's not Wariki Castle, it's not, it's not Buckingham Paris with all these buildings that have stood for centuries and centuries and centuries. You know, even the biggest bomb may not actually blow it up. It's not a church, it's not, a, it's not, it's not something physical. These are spiritual things and that's why they are very, very dangerous because these are unseen things. And yet they control you. They control society, they control a family, they control a nation. They control a group of people. Strongholds. Deep-rooted behavioral patterns. Paul is saying, these are the things that ought to be demolished in order for us to begin to see a change individually, but also as a community, as, as a city, as a nation strongholds they are very very and and this is strongholds as we'll see they 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 hold people captive they, we, we, they, you are captivated they, they don't want to let go easily they, they, they've got to be something a little bit more powerful than their strength than their holding strength to release what they have held captive that's why we see educating people, reforming people. They may look good today, but we see down the road, the same pattern comes up again. I'm sure psychologists were, you are understanding me with these kind of things. There's something deeper. And this is simple. This is all Paul is trying to say, that if we're going to change the communities now, communities, I want you to begin to know your communities has got certain part, uh, uh, behavioral patterns that can only be dealt with by other weapons of love, the truth, and you know, you know, prayer, faith, righteousness, and things like that. And that's why he says, and that's why your righteousness can never be like them. Unless your righteousness exceeds them, you can't win those. You can't deliver them. You can't, I can't deliver him from a situation if my righteousness in that area does not exceed. That's what Paul is trying to say. So it's not complicated. It's just that he's trying to say, now these weapons we have, hooks, are things that we're going to have to dig deep as believers to deal with these things. And uh, the, the thing is, in the, in the modern world today, sometimes we can, we can particularly, you know, with my time that I've spent, I've, I've literally gone up in the Western world. You know, I remember when I was a young man and... I, I, I've grown up to be a man, even if you're a father, a grandfather out here. So I've come to understand different patterns of behavior in, 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 in different parts of the world. 
in Japan, you know, in the Far East Asia, in, in the Western world, you know, you know, in, in Africa, you know, and, and things like that. I've come to see how these, you know, uh, patterns of behavior have been, you know, for centuries being co control people. And one thing I've come to uh, realize as well is that sometimes we Christians in the Western world, we can misunderstand the strongholds because sometimes we can link them to just a cultural thing. Strongholds have got nothing to do with modernization. And I'll give you examples to see how in the modern world there are even terrible strongholds that we need to deal with as a church. Of course, culture and tradition has got something to do with strongholds. And I can't go very far to give you examples, particularly of, of uh, Southern America, you know, the voodoo stuff there, the things they practice. But India is a perfect example. I've never been to India before, but I've lived among Indians, both in Japan and here, to understand what I know, what people that have been there uh, have said. And these strongholds, their roots, their roots, that means they get stronger and more difficult to deal with, with time. The older you are, the deeper the strongholds, or the stronger the strongholds in a particular area because they have had time to deepen their roots. The older the nation is, historically, the deeper are the strongholds. Some of the countries today where we are struggling to preach the gospel, despite sending so many missionaries there, are the oldest countries on earth. China, Japan, India. These countries, Iran, these countries are old countries. Very, very old. Other countries are modern. Zambia is a modern country. No history doesn't even make up a hundred. So we can change very easily. People can change. You can influence their behavior very easily. This country is an old country. That's why there is this, oh, the, there's a, a certain group of political will. Oh, we want to get rid of monarchy and all these kind of things and some things. But it, it's difficult to change those foundations. Up until, up until the death of our beloved late uh, Queen Elizabeth. I didn't know how this country yet is still very, 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 very founded in their monarchy stuff. Thank God for television. Because it took us into those places. They didn't even show us everything. But there are certain things that they could not show. They could not show us. They had to stop somewhere and let the rest carry on. Where they were taking the body and whatever, whatever, whatever happens there. Then I realized, this nation we walk in, Underground, there are foundations that are keeping things, and those are strong foundations. And there are people that are meant to make sure these foundations cannot be changed. You're not just gonna say, okay, today, okay, that's the end. No more, uh, 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 you know, Buckingham Paris. Oh man, do, do you know what Buckingham Paris represents? Do you know what's below those foundations? <laughs> no, even the king can change them. It doesn't matter. King Charles came in and said, oh, maybe he'll be more modern and try to change things. They will struggle. Even William will struggle, no matter how modern he is. They will just tell him, young man, you can't change this. These are strongholds. So the older the country, the older the nation, so they are. India. So we must understand that modernization is not, does not mean that you are now free from strongholds, no. But the cultural traditions are one aspect of strongholds. I, I, uh, there was a time here in Coventry when I attended uh, a, a Hindu funeral. I've attended Hindu funeral, I've attended Sikh funerals, a Sikh funeral and things like that. That's when I began to understand why India, despite being one of the first countries to receive missionaries of the gospel, 
is still one of the slowest country on earth has the slowest pace at which the gospel moves over that vast country you know why the whole country is spread across by these strongholds of hinduism sikhism and all those kind of things and people are entrenched and trapped into them they don't see anything wrong that's what strongholds do and they hold on to those people you know what what stronghold they are they are as held, it has held them against the truth so unless we move in with the truth those people are not ready to listen to the truth they are imprisoned the whole first country so we should not be surprised why a nation that has so many years of preaching the gospel preaching the gospel nations have put money into that country the late at which why because the strongholds of tradition people, people don't see anything wrong and i see it here too i teach a lot of these students in the university have we been interviewed some of them well why have you come to class when in english oh because you know why, why have you got they put in their in their dissertations all oh, these goddess of this goddess of that it's a, it's a fashion to them but you see for me to convince them to remove that and give glory to jesus there must be another truth Amen. that is more powerful mm -hmm. than what they think because they have rejected the truth mm -hmm. in that place it's difficult mm -hmm. for the gospel to move because there is a stronghold mm -hmm. so paul is telling the, the corinthians that unless we move in we ourselves embrace the truth and we get set free by the truth we cannot fight the strongholds, mm -hmm. no matter what. The whole vast country. China, I saw it in Japan. Nice, wonderful people. Nice, wonderful people. But they're the most difficult people to accept love. Love is like a myth. To accept love, to accept help, they are bitter people because of what has happened to them before. That's why they can take their lives like that. Just like that. Because there is a stronghold in the nation that says don't accept love. In those parts of the world, life can be as meaningless as anything. In China, Vietnam, North Korea, life can be just as meaningless, meaningless as anything. Because there is no love. Unless we move in, they see the true love. You cannot set those people free from that stronghold. These are the things Paul is saying. The church has to advance in this way. So as a missionary, whenever you go to any place, the first thing you want God to show you are what strongholds are in this place. What strongholds are in this city? So when we are on our knees, we know how to pray. And the good thing is, even though you spend two minutes on your knees, our weapons are what? They are might and they are divinely powerful to demolish the strongholds. You have no idea, my sister, yeah? How when you pray in the name of Jesus, like we sang today, you are chipping away. You are chipping away on that stronghold. That's what Paul is telling the Corinthians. Don't give up. You may, I know you are used to, you want to see the results right there. Oh, hands up. Okay? Don't do this again. And then you think that's the result. No. Leave that person alone. If, they, if you have educated them, they can start praying for them. It may not take, uh, 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 it might take a year, but don't give up. You are fighting strongholds. You are chipping away. One day, mm. this man yes. will put his hands up to Jesus without a gun. Mm. One day, mm. it will happen. Mm. And to we testimonies of that ourselves, how you oppose the gospel. Mm. I know that Joseph did not become a Christian when she was younger. <laughs> she was fighting the gospel. Fighting the gospel. She's been in church. <laughs> She's been to church. She was fighting the gospel. <laughs> and she, but somebody was praying for her. Until one day somewhere, she just got thrown. <coughs> this is what Paul is trying to tell us. To understand. Hallelujah. Traditional strongholds. 
But you see, in the modern world too, we have them and we see them. And I'll tell you what these strongholds are. That's what you understand. Another one is, racism is a stronghold. Racism is a stronghold. And, and it does not mean the people who exhibit racism are bad people. They're not bad people. And that's why we make a mistake. Mm -hmm. Now you're trying to hate them as well. Mm -hmm. Those people are held by a stronghold that has simply deceives them into thinking their race is superior. Bigotry. Mm -hmm. Their nation is better than the other nation. It's a lie. They're held to that. They're nice people. You can, you can share a meal, you can share a drink. And sometimes that's where people feel confused. How can this person who is so nice, oh, exhibit this kind of a thing? You've seen that at work? Now, if you are going to react every time because you are on the wrong side of their behavior and trying to say, no, you see, I'm not having this next time you say this. I think this is very offensive all the time. How many times are you going to do that? Of course, sometimes it's good to educate people. Let them know. But if we are believers, if you are believers, we've got to understand and see what is beyond the behavior. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a stronghold. Even though there was only one color of people on this earth, racism will still be there. I can tell you that now. It will still be there. We may not call it racism, but it will come up in different forms that we see. Segregation. Classes. All these things are there because these are strong powers that have crept into mankind. And Paul is saying we are now a new breed of people. That's why really as a church, one of the most powerful things we need to be doing as a church is prayer. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Another one in the modern world, where we could be laughing at Africa, India, all these countries, you know, Haiti. Oh, gosh, the witchcraft there. Oh, those are strongholds. <laughs> we have strongholds here. Racism is one of them. In the Western world. Another stronghold is materialism. It's a stronghold. You know, brother, sometimes we, 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 are, we, are, we, we are friends and who are, we are praying for to be Christians. Maybe they've got a problem with, with alcohol. And sometimes we can try to magnify that as the biggest problem. That's a stronghold. <laughs> That's a smaller one. There are patterns of behavior you can see. Materialism is a stronghold that is stopping people from accepting love of Jesus Christ. People who just think, if you don't have, you are nothing. And that's what is controlling us today. All the politics about materialism. Who can balance up the book in the nation and make everybody have? That's not going to happen. But everybody now is a race towards acquiring, acquiring. Materialism is a stronghold. It just reduces the human being to just a joyous animal if you have more then you are happier. But it's not true. That's another strong, stronghold. Greed. People are filled with greed. Selfishness. They can't share. We can, we can laugh at the little kids, but lately these patterns are there even in the adults. Another stronghold is pride. These are, these are not strongholds that only exist in certain deprived parts of, of the world, you know. Pride. As I said on Saturday, I was at one of the top universities in this country, in, at Oxford there, and we were all there, like the academics, and we are feeling proud. We are representing our whatever. Everybody that's walking there walks in a certain way that they are full of knowledge and all these kind of things. And you see the young people that are coming through that we saw there, they are also being taught, I'm telling you. Instead of focusing on what they have come to learn, just because they are on the Oxford University soil, the first thing that is hitting them is pride. You could see it. For one week on the campus. They've not even attended the lecture. They think that they, they, they will rule the world. I'm an Oxford 
university. You can see the pride. Because that's what the university is selling more than anything else. Strongholds. We have made attempts in the higher, higher education sector to try to balance the book for other universities and have an equal field of play. Oxford will never accept it. Cambridge will never accept it. Universities have got groups of their own and they are protecting them. Those are strong ones. <laughs> Amen. Pride. You don't have to be rich to be proud. You can be as poor as anything, and yet the spirit of pride is in It's a stronghold. Amen. Yeah. And there are many other things. So you can begin to see some of these behavioral patterns. They are simply, in other words, strongholds are simply these uh, forces that are unseen, and yet they grip our behavior in such a way that we cannot respond easily to the truth, to the love, to the righteousness of God, to things of faith. We think we are okay. Well, that's the thing that Paul is saying, we need, they need to be demolished. I tell you, if the things I've talked about, the church were to begin to chip away on these things bit by bit, there will be more people in this church, in every church, there will be more righteousness on the streets and everything else. That's what Paul is saying. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now in concluding this, we also have to understand that Paul is saying we fight not by, you know, fortifying ourselves against these things. Mm -hmm. We fight by attacking these things. That's what Paul is trying to say. We fight by attacking these things. The world tries to fight by secluding themselves. Mm -hmm. They put them into this bubble but then you realize even in that bubble, that stronghold is still there. Mm. You know, one of the scriptures that, uh, you know, tells us that we need to fight is Matthew chapter 16, verse 17. And uh, the, the, the misunderstanding has come from NIV particularly, which is what I've put at the bottom here, NIV. Okay? So if you start by reading the NIV, it says... Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. That's where the problem is with the NIV. He says, when you read that just straight in the English, it makes sense to think that we are the church and the, the gates of, 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 of AIDS are trying to crash against the church, but the church will not be overcome. Isn't that what you get from that? Yeah, that's how it comes across. But really, the, 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 the more accurate meaning of this, if you don't read it in the AIV, you read it in other versions, is what it is there. It says, and at you, Peter, on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of AIDS shall not prevail against it. So it's not the church is here and the, the gates of hell are trying to bang against us, trying to break into the church, trying to break into, 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 into Mary. No, it is actually Mary attacking the gates and that gate will not prevail against her power. So when we go in the name of Jesus, for example, the gates of, of, of hell cannot prevail against you and I. Not the other way around. Of course, we have to fortify ourselves, as we have seen in uh, uh, Ephesians chapter chapter six. The Bible talks about the armor of God. Yeah, yeah. the armor of God. God, the the the, the, the uh, you can start from uh, therefore put on verse eighteen. Put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of uh, of evil comes, you have to stand your ground. Put on. So putting on means that you are fortifying yourself. Yeah, you know. Uh, so, so there's that fortification of yourself. Verse 14. Stand then firm. Standing firm means you stand firm. Yourself, okay? Uh, with the belt of the truth buckled around your waist. Uh, with the breastplate of righteousness. You are wearing these things. Verse 15. And with your feet fitted with the redness 
that comes from the gospel of, of peace. So you've got that, your feet, you know, you've put on the, the, the shoes of the gospel of peace. Verse 16. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith. Now you begin to see that this is now shifting from just protection to engagement. He says, in addition to this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish. Now, how are you going to extinguish without engaging? You can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. 17. Take the helmet of salvation, which looks like a, a, a protection, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So you see there is a movement from just protective to offensive. Now he's finally arming you with a sword. Now you're not just going to hold that sword. The enemy doesn't just fear you because, because you're holding a sword. No. You can die with a sword in your hand. So you've got to use that sword. So in, in dealing with the strongholds, we have to be offensive minded. That's why, that's why the truth is an offense if we point. Love is an offensive weapon. Righteousness is an offensive weapon. Faith and prayer is an offensive weapon. The problem the Corinthians had is that these were not physical, so they had a problem. But Paul is saying, no, we've got to deal with the unseen roots before we begin to see on the surface. Don't use physical means. Okay, so we have to attack uh, these things. Amen? So the gates of hell are these strongholds. And the Bible says, when we confront them with the weapons that are mighty, we will prevail against them. They will be destroyed. They will be, they will be, uh, they will be made, this, they will be demolished. That word demolished means to destroy the foundations. That's what Christianity is all about. We are radical people. And if your own personal testimony, you believe it, how you used to be, then you know the same can happen in somebody else, the same can happen in your family, the same can happen in your community, the same can happen in your country, in your city. Yeah. That's what Christianity does to us. It has radical rise and turned everything upside down. You're not just reformed, you are transformed. Something has been demolished. A root cause of something that held you captive for so many years has been demolished. So Paul is simply trying to tell us, brothers, we are not a church that is just hanging on, waiting for Jesus to come. No. We are a church that is winning. We may not see it, but we are winning. But thank God, God allows us to see it as well. We have testimonies. Amen? So it's exciting. That's why we testify every Sunday here. We are a winning church. We are not hapless. We are not helpless. We are victorious. He says they are mighty to destroy strongholds. I tell you, people who understand these people who, uh, even in the West Minister, there are people, don't just look at these uh, MPs and think they are simple people. They are not simple people. A lot of those guys, they have, they have read history. They understand what strongholds are. And some of them are sent there with a very, very wrong spiritual in West Minister. That's why you see the Prime Minister is struggling, struggling to get a certain thing. There are MPs there that understand this warfare in the negative way. They understand that if we lose this, we are done. Yes, brother. Which book is this? Well, this is Second Corinthians. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. And finally, this is what Jesus said. With the Holy Spirit. Amen. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. He says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This is what the church does. 
we are not shrinking back in our comfort zones and hanging on and hear the bones of, boom, 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 of the stronghold that says, well, we are still safe. He's coming back soon. No, we have the anointing to attack Amen. on our knees in the name of Jesus, calling upon the name of God the Deliverer. Because we know that behind all what we see, there are these strongholds, but we have the Holy Spirit. Amen. So please remember, particularly even in your own job, in your own job, and sometimes some of these things are more linked to certain careers, doctors, nurses, psychologists, you know, people who deal with more of the emotional inner being of a human being, the inside of a human being. If you are a believer, and I thank God we've had so many testimonies here. Of some of you, you are in, a, in your workplace, and you're just trying to administer a medicine, but you say a prayer, and you see somebody come back to life. It's not the administration of that medicine. It's because you prayed. I want you to know, folks. I want you to know. Behind all these patterns that we see, these patients coming back all the time to a hospital, over this issue. You've got a record of them like this now. Behind all this, there are strongholds. There are patterns that are enshrined, controlling and fighting not to let go of the prisoner. Say a prayer. I'm an engineer. I don't deal directly with human beings and buildings, but I'll tell you, even I have seen it. I've seen strongholds from my own students. Clever, 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 top, top notch students. When it comes to exam, something gives them up and they are failed. You give them a second chance again, you think they'll get themselves together, they are failed. I tell you, I pray for some of these students. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> I pray for this, whatever it is. And you see them next time, they pass. Pray. 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 It's not just what we see. That we hate even the uh, exhortation. Do all your therapies, yeah? Listen to me. You are, you are trying to be a, a therapist and do all therapies. They are good things, but it's not saying educating people, re reforming people, or, or, or changing this and this is not. It's, they are all good things, but the problem is if they were effective, we would not still be having these society problems that we have today. The answer is they are not effective. Why? As Christians, we know. They are deeper things of society, strongholds. And that's what people is saying. Though we may be few as Christians, but we have weapons that are powerful and strong. And if we can just realize this, and realizing is the number one thing, we will be winning the battles of our, our streets, our towns, our cities, our nations, and globally as well. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let the politicians do all the reforms. The injustices will still be there, but we are praying. Hallelujah. We'll be hearing reports of people changing, people being having better behavioral patterns. We are praying because we are attacking the source of, of the problem. So pray. Whatever you do, maybe you do with machines, maybe it's just music. Music, music has strong cause in it. Be sensitive. Be sensitive. Make sure it doesn't make you proud. Make sure you don't play to the gallery. If you are in a worship place, you know, be humble. Understand what you're doing and why you are doing it. It's all to the glory of God. Don't make it make you proud and, and it's the stronghold is trying to get grip you. Because once you get into it, it will be so difficult to get you out. So if you see it, pray. Father, in Jesus' name, you pride. I see you trying to grip me trying to offer this gift God has given you. I come against you in Jesus' name. I set myself free and I'm using this gift to the glory of God. Notice these things. They are strongholds. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So next week in part three, <laughs> I'll just give examples of uh, where some scriptures in the Bible where the weapon of truth, the weapon of love, the weapon of righteousness, the weapon of of all kinds of weapons, where you can cite examples and say, yeah, there, there was the weapon of that, that changed people, that changed the situation. But we just know that as Second Timothy says, the word of God is anointed for teaching the proof it can help us. Everything is in there. Hallelujah. Amen. Strong hearts. 
things that we can't see. But they control us. They control people. Amen. And doesn't mean that you are you are backslidden. No, no. It doesn't mean that you are backslidden. It doesn't mean that. You know, but if you notice that, please understand. It's not just about going for a training course, a therapy, what and what and what. Begin to attack it as a stronghold. Just praying in the name of Jesus. Confronting it with the truth. The love of God. Go love some people out there. Sending them love cards will never change them. Just be on your knees and say, Father God, you set me free. I love these people. Help them. Bless them. And one day, things will begin to change. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Let's stand to our faith and just pray. Father God, we thank you. We give you praise. So for those of you that are following us, have been following us, we pray that you've been blessed by this. Amen. Watch this again. Pray over these things. Find out. No, look at some of these patterns in your own life, things that you even yourself you don't like, you feel why that's, do I keep behaving like this all the time? I, I, I thought I have, uh, uh, I have uh, gone past this and yet again you feel trapped into it. Don't worry, the Bible says we have, we have divine power tools, weapons to fight that. Just go to Jesus. And let him reveal to you how you can exercise, you know, you know, releasing yourself in the love of God. Allowing the truth to set you free. So you can all go, go and set others free as well. So God bless you and we'll see you again uh, next week.